on YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop and another project video. Today the plan is we are going to make a boring bar. The largest boring bar I currently have is three quarter inch diameter, which is pretty good. It's got pretty good rigidity for getting out to some larger holes, but I would really like to have a larger boring bar when I do some, uh, some bigger bores and be able to just make sure I don't have any chatter, get some additional rigidity out of that. So I have some two inch 4140. I actually have a longer piece. It's just uh, heavy to hold up on the camera. But we're going to take some of this two inch, I'm uh, going to machine that down to one and a half inch diameter. So we're going to make a one and a half inch diameter boring bar. We're going to make an overall length of about 11 inches. It's going to be set so that it has three inches of stick out on the tool holder all the time and then has an adjustment for another three and a half inches or so for a total boring depth of about six and a half inches. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take the shaft, turn it down to inch and a half diameter, and then we're going to take it over to the mill. We're going to mill a couple of slots on here so that we have a nice square, a flat, so that we're going to be able to stick this right into a quick change tool holder. So we're just going to mill away the top and the bottom so that that fits in just like a tool would fit into a tool holder. It has that ability to slide back and forth. And then we're going to take it over to the mill as well, and we're going to mill a slot in the end of it. We'll be able to just stick a 5 16 inch tool bit right in the end of that. This one is high speed steel. It's what I've got handy. I actually tend to use more brazed carbide, so I'll probably use more brazed carbide with it. But we'll mill the slot 5 16 for any kind of a tool bit to go in there. And then we'll put a flat on the top and we will drill and tap some holes for some set screws to hold that in there. And then we will have a mooring bar. Uh, 11 inches of this 4140 cost me about $16, $17, so significantly less money than I can go pick up a one and a quarter inch boring bar for online. So that's the project. As always, appreciate you watching. Hope you like the channel. Hope you like the videos on welding, machining, milling, everything else we have going on here in the Blades to Be shop. If you want to see more of them, please hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. You'll know exactly when the next video is getting released. I'm trying to put them out for you at least by Saturday morning, sometimes even getting them out on Friday evening. And again, hit that subscribe button and you'll know when it's there and ready to watch. All right, with that, let's head over to the lathe and let's take a look at exactly where this is going to go. And let's get started turning this piece down. Come on. As I said, currently our largest boring bar is three quarters of an inch in diameter. And it's in this larger tool holder right here. Very nice, fits on the quick change tool post. So I'm not going to machine a tool holder like this to hold an inch and a half. So my plan is I'm just going to mill this down, mill flats down on here to fit into one of these existing quick change tool holders. So we'll still be able to take it on and off, still be able to set it uh, on center and have it so that it's got repeatability to go on and off of the quick change tool post. And we're going to mill those slots in there long enough that we have about three inches of adjustment to move this back and forth. Obviously, that would be sitting on the other side for boring, but you get the idea. So pretty quick project. Nothing really too super accurate on this, even turning it down to the inch and a half diameter. This is 4140. I want to get a decent finish on it, so probably going to take a pretty heavy cut for that last cut with an insert to be able to get a nice finish over that 11 inch length. So just going to do a nice heavy feed on there. I mean, if I get the diameter within plus or minus 10 thou, honestly, that's going to be close enough. Just want to have some good size on that. And then when we get it over to the mill, we're going to go in the 5 eighths of an inch deep. We'll make sure we go in a little bit deeper than that so that it's, it's bottoming out in there. And we'll cut a flat on here, and then we will cut away the material on both sides to basically just have a nice big square sticking out that fits in that. Uh, it's not going for, again, not going for a super tight fit in there. Anything less than three quarters of an inch probably end up going maybe something five eighths deep and maybe five eighths of an inch wide or you know, close to three quarters so that it's a good fit in there. That's the plan. So I have a big enough spindle bore on this lathe that I should be able to push this two inch stock all the way in. I'll spin it slow, center drill it, and then when I pull it out 11 inches, I've only got a two foot piece here. So having 11 inches back inside there, we should be able to spin it fast enough to get a good finish. So that's the plan. Let's get this in there, let's get it center drilled, and then we'll bring it on out and uh, turn a quarter of an inch off the outside of this.
now we want a finished piece of about 11 and a half inches long. So that should give us plenty right there. All right, so that 11 and a half inches is because this is four and a quarter long and we want three inches of three and a half inches of movement. So that's gonna be seven and three quarter inches. Plus we want three inches sticking out. So that's gonna be 10 and three quarter inches. So actually, sorry, 11 inches is what we're going for overall. 11 inches is what we want total to give us that extra movement. So yeah, they say measure twice, cut once, right? So four and a quarter plus the three that we have sticking out, that is seven and a quarter inches. And then on top of that, we need three and a half inches of movement. So that's going to be 10 and a quarter plus a half inch is 10 and a half. And we'll just make it a nice even number. So we're actually going to have three and three quarter inches of slide for a total of six and three quarter inches deep that we could bore. So that should be good. So that's where our 11 inches comes in. So if I'm only going for 11 inches onto that center, yeah, that's plenty. We don't even need quite that much sticking out. Somewhere about there should be good. Should have locked that in place. That gives us an inch to spare. Okay, we've got that locked in. And let's move our camera around here a little bit so that I've got clearance for this long cut. And we'll see if we can't get some kind of a cool camera angle to see what this is gonna look like for us. Okay, we've got this all ready to go. Mark off our 11 inches here. Make sure we turn that back far enough. And now that we don't have a foot of material sticking inside the chuck, we can turn this up a little bit. We're gonna turn this at about 750 RPM or so. All right, so I left myself just enough room back here on the center that I can get off the end of my piece. I'm gonna go in there. So we're taking a quarter of an inch off. We're gonna take 100 thou, 100 thou, and then we'll take a 50 thou finish cut. I've got my feed set at seven thou per revolution. So again, a pretty coarse feed. I think that should give us a pretty nice finish on here. And if we need to, uh, we'll go to a brazed carbide insert for a finish cut if we want something a little bit better. But I think with a heavy enough cut, a little bit of pressure on this insert, I think we should be able to get a pretty good finish on here. Uh, I do plan to switch over to a sharper insert for that finish cut just to make sure it comes out a little bit nicer, so we'll do that. But let's rip a couple hundred thou off of here, get this rough down, and then we'll come back and worry about taking that finish cut. Looking nice. Tell you what, I think if we just get that finish on there, we may just go with uh, go with that for our finish. We don't need to put on a different insert. We'll just keep going with 100 thou cuts. And I can't seem to do math today because if we're starting with two inches and we're going for inch and a half, we've got to take half inch off this bar, not a quarter of an inch. So we've got another 400 thou to go. Let me just get a mic and let's see how we're doing here. I don't know that I've ever turned 11 inches long on this lathe, so I'm curious what kind of size we have on both ends of this. So that took 101 thou. We are at 899 right there. And we're, so we got one thou in six inches. Two thou over the course of that. So I've got two thou taper over that uh, 11 inch turn right there. Gets a little bit smaller as we get to the inside. Good to know for future. So yeah, pretty much just maybe 1.9 thou over that 11 inches. That is definitely gonna work for us for our boring bar, plenty of accuracy. I haven't done any adjustments on this lathe since I purchased it other than set it up for level. So I would say that came pretty good out of the box turning that distance. I know I did put a bar in here and check it and uh, I didn't have any movement on a dial across that. So, uh, you know, haven't gone in and set up the, the ways or any other adjustments, so not too bad. All right, so we are 1.899. So we're trying to get down to 1.5. So we've got 400, right at 400 thou more to come off of this. So let's just go ahead and take 400 thou cuts. We should end up with that same finish when we're done and we'll be ready to go take it to the mill. All right, 
right, let's get a fresh insert on that and we'll take off our last cut. Let's see, it's getting a little bit warm. Just to make sure we've got a hundred thou left to go off of that. So we are $5.99 right there. $5.98 right there. And $5.97 and a couple tenths right there. So we've maintained that exact same taper. So we'll take just a little less than 100 thou off of that for our finish cut. We're going to speed it up to 900 now that we're down a full half an inch. We'll bump our speed up a little bit. So I'll slow my VFD back down to 60 hertz and I'll go ahead and just gear into 900 RPM. So 900 RPM, I'm going to keep the feed rate the same. Get a fresh turn on that insert and we will get that cut to size. Right, so again, the nice thing about this DRO is I just turned that insert and I can expect it to go cut exactly where it left off for me before on my digital readout. So we're going to go ahead and to have it be nowhere less than one and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and take 98 off of here. So we're going into 498 and let's take our finish cut off of this. It's a little hot, so it may shrink up on us, but again, not a critical size. That's going to be right there. For you. I think that will do. This is gonna be around the shop for a few years. I think that finish is good enough to show anybody. That will work. So let's bevel the end of this, and then we'll part it most of the way off. I'm just gonna run a hacksaw through the last little bit. We'll get that off. And once it's now that it's short and smaller, we'll turn it around and we'll face the ends off a little cleaner, and then we'll be ready to get this over in the mill and start cutting our uh, notch on there. Now my parting tool is 86 thou wide, so if I run down 11 inches and 86 thou, we should be right at where we want to be. And we'll just go a little extra since we're going to face some off each end. Somewhere right about there. But let's get this camera turned around so you can see what's taking place. And we'll get this parted nearly through and then we'll hacksaw it off. Alright, and we will slow this down for parting. Need a glove to grab that. Take some pressure off that center. Ah, are there better ways to do that? Sure. I could get out my bandsaw and do that, but for the two minutes that takes, that's a pretty easy way for me to go ahead and get that cut off. And something this long, I didn't want to part all the way through, so that works for me. Everybody's got their own techniques for that one. Got a nice piece of this left. I still need to make a tool height gauge for this. So I think some of that's going to be for that tool height gauge here in the near future. All right, let's just get both ends of this faced off a little nicer. Step one is complete. We have a nice bar. So let's get that over. Let's get that set up in the mill and let's cut our notch down so it's going to fit in our tool holder. Okay, let's head over there. All right, let's get this dividing head off of here. Let's get our vise on and our vise all dialed in and then we'll be ready to get this thing milled out. Wipe off my Texas rust protection here. A little bit of hydraulic oil there just stuck itself right on the bench. All right, we'll get a little better angle on that so we can see dialing this in. I would say we have got that spot on, so we are dialed in. All right, so to get our piece in here, I want this to be the front edge where I don't have a center hole in it. So that's where we're gonna cut our notch across here. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna go in here and I wanna cut away 
Those aren't very straight lines on there. But I want to cut away all of this material right here. So we're going to cut away all that. We're going to come over here and we're going to cut away all this. And we're going to leave about 700 thou wide right in here. 700 thou wide and we're going to go in 5 eighths of an inch deep. And that's what we're going to leave and that's what we're going to cut to fit into our tool holder. So when I set this up in the mill, if we are an inch and a half across and I need to go 5 eighths of an inch deep, I'm going to go almost to the center line. So I need to make sure that I have this lifted up so that we're going to be grabbing the center right up here near the top of the vise. So I need to make sure I get that up on some parallel so I have that up a little bit like that so that I can make sure I get good grip on it. So let's see how high we need to get that up there. All right, well, let's use a little bit of math here and see if we can't figure it out. So my jaws, I am pretty sure my jaws are an inch and a half deep, if I remember. All right, so the jaws are an inch and a half deep. My piece is an inch and a half. So basically, I need something three quarters of an inch is how high I need that off of there. And what have I got right here? All right, I have five eighths of an inch. So honestly, if I need to go, well, but I need to go more than five eighths because I need to go five eighths from where it is going to be flat. So we need to get that up a little higher. There's a piece of three quarter inch key stock. So then I should be holding that right on the center line. Let me go ahead and find the back of this vise so that it'll be easy for us to find the center of our piece. And before we do that, let's make sure we're gonna have enough height. There's our end mill. We've got enough clearance. So that's gonna give us enough room there. All right, let's find that vise jaw. Let's find out where we're coming off of for center. All right, so I found the edge of my cutter. It's 200 thou diameter. I moved over 100 thou, so now my center line is right on the edge of this vise. So I'm gonna zero my DRO right there. So my center line right on the edge of the vise, I'm gonna come over 750 thou to get to the center of my 1.5 inch shaft. Now that it's cooled, we'll double check it with a mic to see exactly where we ended up. All right, now that it cooled off, we're one to two under, so we'll go with 749 just to really find the, the middle of our shaft here. All right, so now I should be dialed in on exactly the middle of my shaft. We're trying to cut 700 thou wide, so we'll We'll go with the half the diameter of my cutter, so half of 0.625 plus 350 thou, and that should be how far we want to move each side. So my cutter is 0.625 divided by 2 is 312 plus 0 0.350, so 6625 is what we want to move each direction off of here to get the width we're looking for for our piece in the middle. And first we want to take and we want to cut a flat spot on there so that uh, we we know where we're going to take our depth from. So we want to just go flat on that, you know, pretty much that 700 wide. So just about the width of the cutter. So we'll go down, we'll flatten it, just not, you know, not quite the width of the cutter. And then that'll leave a little bevel for us when we are done so we don't have to break the corner later. So that should be good. Let's get our part in there and we'll get our edge finder out. All right, let's get a more accurate measurement on our three inches here. All right, somewhere right about there. So we will zero our DRO, so now we know where we're coming to from three inches. That's the end we want to put our keyway, so we're good there. We're gonna go all the way down here, and we're gonna get rid of material. So first, let's flatten the top of this down so that we know exactly how deep it is we're gonna go, and then we'll come and work our way in and get this cut. Okay, so there is where I want to now set my depth to go down 650 to give myself 25 thou clearance. Actually, I guess don't even need 25. We can go down maybe, yeah, we don't need to go down quite 650. So the plan is we will set our depth to cut. We will feed across to get the inserts down in there. And then we will feed along this way to remove all the material. Coming over this side, we will set our depth to cut feed over to our where we need to go and then feed all the way down this way and then feed out. So what I want to do is our finished dimension is going to be from this center line 0.662 over there. So let's take see what that looks like. 
So there's our 6625, so that should work out. We're gonna end up with just a little bit of a bevel on this corner that we just made there, so that'll be good. So we've got a nice flat to go against the back of our tool post. We'll have just a little bit of a bevel, and then we will have a little bit of clearance on the front of our tool holders where that's gonna go in. I think, let's start with a 75 thou deep cut. We're not cutting very much this first time around. And I'm gonna feed over to, I'm gonna leave 10 thou so that we can go take a nice finish cut off of there uh, and a couple of depths when we're done. So I'm gonna feed over to 672 right now to leave 10 thou to be able to finish. So first off, set my depth of cut at 75 thou. Get a piece of paper to keep track of my turns and my depths here. All right, I'm gonna change that out. I'm gonna put a 3 8 end mill on there, and I'm gonna go take a finish cut, clean up all those little steps that I got from this end mill. I should be able to take it in one cut, and we're just gonna take about five, six thou off each side, take about two thou off the bottom, and just take one nice cleanup cut down both of those to get that all finished up and looking good. So let's get our cutter changed out, and we will get that done. All right, so I went from a 5 8 cutter to a 3 8 diameter cutter. So I should be able to move over 1 8 of an inch and re-zero to get to my end point. So I'm gonna re-zero that axis. And we are now gonna go for, all right, we're now going for 5 3 7 5. Should be where I just make contact down there. Looks close, we're just gonna go for 5 40. If I end up a little bit over 700 wide there, that's gonna be fine. So we're gonna go into 540. We'll touch that here in a minute. Let's go ahead and set our depth. All right, we'll spin that up and touch off there. And it's gonna be, yeah, we'll probably have to take a second little pass to clean up the edge. 3 8 wide isn't quite gonna get all the way across, so we'll have to take a second little pass to clean it up. Uh, but it's gonna be fine, we'll do that. Let's get our depth set.
Well, that end mill did a fabulous job. That is complete. Let me just think before I take that out of there, but the plan is we're gonna take that out of there. We're gonna put it into our tool holder, clamp it back in there, put a flat spot to put our set screws into, and then we will cut our notch, and then we will drill and tap the holes for those set screws. All right, let's get that out of the vise. Move on to our next step. We'll do some quick deburring on here. I think we got all that feeling pretty nice. Deburred. See how well this fits in our tool holder. Open those set screws up a little more. And let's see, that's going to go on this way for boring. And there we go. So I've got just clearance on the front side, so it's going all the way in there and bottoming out. And we've got room. Again, you can put up to a 700 and up to a three quarter inch. But this is actually almost 800 thou wide, this opening. We went for 700 is what we were going for. Let's see where we ended up on that. Yeah, went with 707, so I only ended up taking a, uh, only ended up taking about a 5 thou finish cut on there. So 703 and 703. So again, nice, don't have a lot of taper on that. Good size, good fit in here. And we get that up nice and tight. So, you know, that's gonna be our minimum extension on here is gonna be that three inches, but that's gonna work out well. And then you have all the way up to, you can move it all the way out and bore up to six and a half inches deep. And you know, we could put that onto three bolts on there and actually get in a full seven and a half inches deep to bore a hole if we wanted to. So pretty versatile, anywhere from three inches up to seven and a half. We could even hang it out on two set screws and sneak it a little further if you had to, but I'm guessing you'd have pretty bad chatter problems by that point. So there's what we're looking like. I'm gonna go ahead and get this clamped in here, and then we're just gonna use this clamped in here in our vise, and that's what we're gonna use to clamp it back in the mill, and that should put us right at 90 degrees to be able to mill our slot in here. I'm gonna end up having to use a slitting saw. That's the only thing that I've got. I can't, uh, I don't have any way to stand this up vertical in the mill to be able to cut an end mill through there. At least I haven't thought of a creative enough way to do it. And I don't have an end mill with, it's a, I don't have a 5 16 end mill that can go an inch and a half across there. So we're gonna hold it and I'm gonna use a slitting saw to go across to make our slot. And then I'm gonna throw the face mill on there to cut a flat for where our set screws are gonna go and should leave a nice beveled edge on there instead of a squared shoulder. So we'll get this back in the mill and we'll get it all set up. We'll cut our notch and we'll get it drilled and tapped. All right, so the center of our shaft hasn't changed. We're still, that vice jaw is still in the same place. So my DRO is still gonna get me to center. What I do want to figure out is I want a flat spot, you know, roughly the 5 16 back just to make it look good. So I'm gonna go from this edge of my bevel. I'm just gonna eyeball where that is on the end of my piece. Maybe give it just a little bit extra. So I'm gonna eyeball that to the end and then from there I'm gonna move over 5 16 So I should have a nice 5 16 flat and then I'll have a little, you know, the 45 degree angle up off of that where we cut it. And also for my tool slot, we'll see this more when we get the, the slot cutter in there. Most boring bars have the top of the cutter on line with the center of the bar. Now it doesn't matter a whole lot. We're going to adjust the height of the bar and we're going to make sure that our tool is right on center with the lathe. We're going to go ahead and cut our slot so that it is from the center down 5 16 of an inch. So that's where our slot is going to be in there. So it'll be from the center down so our tool bit will be lined up pretty much on the center of the bar. So I'm gonna cut a flat, uh, you know, enough that we can get three set screws across the top of that. So don't know exactly how deep I'm gonna go with my with my flat, but probably gonna go down at least three eighths of an inch, uh, maybe even a little bit more. We'll just sort of see where it looks good going across there. I think that's about good. We'll line that up, come over our 5 16 so We'll come over 312. And I'll go just a little extra. I'm gonna come over 315. So that's where I'm gonna cut my flat. And we're gonna slow this down a little bit. And we'll come in there and cut that. But I need to know where my depth is first. All right, let's get this slowed down. And then we'll go in there and touch off for our depth. And then we'll get in there and cut our flat.
Perfect. Well, that's 250 thou off of there. I think that'll give us plenty of room to put three set screws across the top of that and hold our tool bit in place. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. Let's get our slitting saw mounted in here. I think for our slitting saw, I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. I got the chips flying at me here and that's no fun. So there really is no reason I do not need to have the, the center of that bar lined up. Uh, maybe what I'll go do is I'll go center drill my holes on there real quick so that we know exactly where the center of the bar is and we'll go a equal distance off each side of those. So I'll do that really quick while we're here. We'll center drill those and then I'm going to take this out and turn it around so that when we're using the slitting saw, it's flinging all the chips the other way away from me since we're going to be at that for a while, I think. So there we are back on center. We get that out here. And we don't need perfect on that edge. We'll just have our holes more or less centered in that. I'm just going to eyeball the end of that drill on the end of my piece. And we went over 315, so half of that is going to be 157. That sure doesn't look very centered. So let's double check what we have going on here. I guess I went to the eyeball on the wrong edge of my tool bit, so that's just wider than what we wanted. So we're going to stick with going over to the center of what's going to be our 5 16 tool bit. So it's just not going to be perfectly centered in the flat that I just made. Yeah, I balled that within one and a half thou last time, so we'll call that good. I don't want to be over there far enough, we've got good spacing, so I went 450 thou that way, we'll go 450 the other way, have all our holes lined up. All right, let's get this turned around the device, and let's get our slitting saw in there, get the camera tight lined up the other way, and let's get our slot cut. All right, well, we're going to experiment real time. So here's my slitting saw. The widest I have is a 32nd, but I've got two of them. So I'm actually going to put two of them on here stacked up to get a 16th of an inch. So that's still going to take us five cuts to get across there. But uh, we'll see how this is going to work. If it'll take, you know, two of those in there at one time. Just going to feed it slow. See how it likes it. See if I even have enough depth. I may have to. All right, we've got enough depth. I want to be. So I've got the center mark on there from where we had this in the lathe. So I can get more or less that that is going to be the top of my tool is going to be on center there. So we're going to cut the top first and then we're going to work our way straight down. So wherever we take this first cut, that's going to be the top edge of the tool and then we'll cut down to get to the bottom. And I think that gets us pretty much the middle of the bar. That should pretty much just cut our center mark in half right there. All right, let's check what we want for a speed on this. Pretty sure these cutters are yeah, three inch diameter, 4140, high speed steel, three inch, I don't know, somewhere around 30 flutes we'll go with. And we want to be going nice and super slow. Well, let's see how this is going to work. Well, that cut surprisingly better than I would have imagined. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and knock that out five more times. Four more times, I guess. Perfect. All right, so that is a nice snug fit in there right now. So I'm actually going to go back up to the top now, and I'm going to take about 15 thou. I want to make sure I have clearance. High-speed steel bits aren't going to get stuck. 
But after we put the set screws, you tighten those on top of a brazed carbide and it pushes up a little bit of that soft material around it and brazed carbide tool bits tend to get stuck in here. So again, we are right at 5 16 This should be on center. So tip of my tool bit should be on center with the bore. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit off the top for clearance just so we're not fighting tool bits in and out of there all the time. Let's go back and do that. Well, there it is. Gotta tell you, that slitting saw cut so much better than I was anticipating it would in there. I really wasn't quite sure what to expect with that, but left a pretty nice bottom. We'll take a file and we'll go in there and we'll just touch that bottom with a file and, and clean that up. Some of the little bumps in between from having the two blades stack, but it's actually not too bad. Like I say, we'll touch that with a file, get that out of there. Now our tool bit pushes in there quite nicely and it's just, Couple thou deep, I went 315 deep instead of 312, just to make sure it's in there all the way. So that is looking very nice. And just got enough clearance, not gonna be fighting those in and out of there. All right, let's get that off. Let's get our drill chuck on. We'll probably have to change the height in order to uh, get our drill chuck high enough, but let's get those drilled for 1032 tap drill size and let's get those tapped. And we set those up on there staggered and they never even turned. They stayed on there locked in place the whole time. So very nice. All right, I actually changed my mind. I'm gonna go 832 on these instead of 1032, just to leave a little more meat on the front of the hole there. This is a tap handle from Northern Machining over in New Jersey that I picked up and I put this little bearing on the top here with a snap ring. So it's self-centering, self-aligning, even on these little small taps. And I'm gonna hold that bearing in there in my chuck so that it's easy to spin. So that's gonna spin and keep it lined up straight in the holes. It's gonna make it really easy to hand tap these three holes in here. All right, let's get our other one started in here. I think we'll pull them out to finish them to make sure that we don't break a tap in there. All right, let's get this out of here. We can get a little better feel on that tap. We'll go put that over in the vise and I think we'll do a better job of finish tapping those holes. All right, let's get these tapped the rest of the way through. All right, well, I think part of my problem is, it's a really cheap tap and it's not feeling very good. So I think I'm gonna grind that back a little bit, try to get to some sharper teeth on this tap. It's on its, nearly it's on its last leg. Let's see if that does any better for us. Yes, that felt much, much better. I think we made it through. I need to go buy some set screws, so when I pick up the set screws, I'll pick up a fresh tap and just make sure I can get all the way through to the very end of these holes. That did cut through there much better. We are tapped and ready. All right, let's go ahead and put a file, clean up a couple of these edges on here. All right, I just took the countersink tool and really took a nice big countersink out of the top of those. I think now I can run that tap in there the rest of the way and make sure we're all the way through. Well, let's go ahead and see what this looks like on the lathe.
Well, it looks like it is supposed to be there. We'll get some set screws in there tomorrow night. We'll get a uh, braced carbide tool bit in there. And I don't think I have anything to bore with a diameter that big, but we'll just take a couple cuts off the outside of something just to see how that bar works. But that turned out, I believe, how it was supposed to. So yeah, we'll pop some set screws in there and get our tool bit, but that is a one and a half inch boring bar for about $20 and about two and a half, three hours worth of work to machine it all out. It's gonna serve me well, I think. All right, we'll see you back tomorrow when we put the tools in there the rest of the way and take some cuts. Well, welcome back. Mere seconds for you, but it was 24 hours for me. But our tool bit came in, so we've got a nice 5 16 braised carbide tool bit we can use there. So again, what I purchased right now is a turning bit, but the beauty of this uh, homemade boring bar is unlike buying one that holds inserts where it's gonna pretty much be good for one operation, this one I can buy turning bits, I can buy threading bits, I can buy just blank carbides that I can grind up for grooving, radiusing, anything. So this one, one and a half inch bar is gonna be good for a lot of different things. So that fits in there very nicely. I already hacksawed the end off to get it so it's not sticking too far out the back side of the bar. So I ground that off. I do need to go over and sharpen this. So we're gonna go do that here in a moment. And then I picked up the set screws. I had my choice between 3 8 of an inch long or 3 quarters of an inch long. Half inch is what I actually needed. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shorten up these three quarter inch. It's actually good, I was gonna grind it off anyway. Set screws always come with that dimple in the end and especially with braised carbide because they're so soft that they tend to dig a pretty good hole in there every time you tighten them. And then when you take your tool bit out, put it back in, it can be hard to get it to move around. It wants to always go back in those same set screw marks. So I wanna flatten off these set screws anyway and I would recommend that if you are using a set screw for something where you, you want to be able to move it and adjust it all the time, uh, that you flatten them and then it doesn't mar up the surface quite as bad and it's still gonna give it a good secure hold. So I'm gonna take a quarter of an inch off all these, get them down to about half an inch so that they're just flush with the top of the bar. You get this sharpened and then we will, I'm gonna go ahead and run that tap the rest of the way through these holes just to make sure that where I ground that other tap yesterday to sort of sharpen it up that uh, we do have threads all the way through. So I've got those three things to do real quick and then we will come back. And as I said, I don't have any piece to bore a hole in, but I'm gonna put in a chunk of, you know, just more of this two inch 4140 and we're gonna take some cuts off the backside with that. And we'll see how this bar does, sticking out three inches, and then we'll stick it out that full seven and a half inches and we'll see how it cuts. So stay tuned. All right, that cut just a little bit out of there, so I'm gonna go put a little bit of air to that. Make sure we get that all cleaned up. We'll come back, sharpen our tool bit, get our set screws in there. All right, we've got a nicely sharpened tool bit. Gotta say, these made in the USA carbides, this is a very nice looking tool bit compared to some of those big three quarter inch ones that I have. If you watched my video on sharpening carbide, yeah, this one is a much nicer looking tool bit. So we'll get that in there. And we'll put just a little bit of oil on our threads here since I just air blew them and cut rid of everything in there. Not too much. Well, there we have it. There is our boring bar built. I don't remember if I had those tight or not. All right, let's get a piece of metal in our chuck here and we'll try taking some cuts. All right, we were taking, we were turning at 750 and we were taking 100 thou cuts off of this when we roughed our bar out with our insert. Let me get this on center here first. I really need to make a height adjustment tool for here because I don't want to have to spin this around to line it up on my center. So we'll go off of that center hole there and be close enough for what we're doing. But I really do need to make a center adjustment. All right, so we're going to spin this at 750 RPM. We're going to feed it at 7 thou per revolution. And we're going to have that sticking out three inches. We'll take a 100 thou cut off. We'll see what that looks like. And then we'll come back and we'll stick it out there a little further and see what kind of a cut we can take and see if it shatters, see how it does. There, I had to get a little creative with that camera angle there to make sure you're gonna be able to see around this boring bar and around the tool post. So again, we're gonna go ahead and take a 100 thou cut. We got it spinning at 750 RPM. We're spinning it backwards since we're cutting off the backside and let's see how it does.
Well, the chips didn't want to break for us, but it did cut just fine. Left a nice finish. You can see by the drag mark coming back, a little bit of flex in there. All right, let's try a 50 thou cut. There, 50 thou cut, we were getting chips more or less to break on us there. No rattle, no bang. I mean, that is cutting very, very smooth. So that is definitely working. Let's hang that out there the full seven and a half inches and see what happens then. Remember to go the right way. All right, we'll take another 50 to start with. So it was breaking chips for the most part. No chatter on there. Let's try a hundred thou cut. So still didn't want to break our chips, but you can, I don't know if y'all can see how thick those are, but Again, that's 7 thou feed per revolution. That's taking a nice, hefty chip off of there. Let me slow that down to my 4 thou and see what this would look like taking a little finish cut off of there. After roughing that down a little bit, that's not as nice a finish. Would want to sharpen that up a little bit, but it's still a pretty decent finish on there for a little 20 thou cut off of that piece. But bottom line, we've got that bar hanging out there a full seven and a half inches, and it is cutting just fine. So for hanging out there a full seven and a half inches, we're hanging out there a full six and three quarter inches right there. And at six and three quarter inches, 100 thou cuts, no chatter. We've got a versatile bar that can do turning, internal threading, internal grooving. So I would say that's success. $20 boring bar holds any kind of braced carbide insert that's 5 16 inch square. And we've got great versatility to do that. And it is still sitting on a quick change tool post. So, so you're going to get all the benefits you need from a quick change tool post as well. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap for another project here in the Blades to Be shop. I hope you enjoyed following along as we made this homemade boring bar. Started with a piece of 2 inch 4140 and machined that out to be able to hold 5 16 brazed carbide tool bits. Again, great versatility from this boring bar for internal turning, threading, grooving, radiusing, anything you need to be able to do with that, and all for $20 worth of steel and it runs about $7 for a good quality American braised carbide insert tool bit, and you run about 2 or $3 for a, an offshore one. So very cheap tooling, cheap make-at-home project, and really some fun machining. We got to use the lathe, we got to use the mill, got to use a slitting saw, so really a fun project to make. Hope you enjoyed working on that. I know this is going to uh, get a lot of use in the shop and last probably longer than I will, so good piece of tooling there to have around. As always, appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when the next video is coming out. I'm trying to get them out for you by 7 a.m. every Saturday morning. Sometimes even getting them out on Friday night if you want that early preview. So until that next video comes out, I hope you're out in your own shop making some chips of your own, working on some of your own projects, and we'll see you soon. Take care.